Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Hi and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Today we are going to see how to use the shader graph to get a dissolve effect. So the end result that we are focusing on will look something like this. So as you can see both the cube and the capsule is just disappearing and if you reduce this slider it is coming back to normal. So let's see how to get this done. Now you can create custom shaders in two ways. One is using code and the other one is using the shader graph. So we will not be using any code today. We will be using the shader graph. Now to use the shader graph, you should have first installed the package. So if you are not, just go to window package manager and in the unity registry, search for shader graph and then install it. So once the shader graph is installed, you can go to your project window, right click go to create and then select shader graph and inside shader graph go to built in and this is totally dependent on your render pipeline if you are in universal render pipeline this will be urp and if you are in hdrp this will be hdrp so just go inside your render pipeline and select lit or unlit so if you want emission then select lit and if you if you don't want the object to be affected by light then select unlit shader graph so in this case, we'll, we'll be adding a small glow effect to the shader. So let's select lit shader graph. So now let's rename it to dissolve. Okay. Before editing the shader, let's create a material that is related to the shader. So in order to create a material that is dependent on the shader, just select the shader, right click, go to create material. Okay. and we'll call this this all text so now we have a shader dissolve and a material called dissolve effect so let's assign this material to the cube so let's drag and drop to the cube so now the cube material has the custom shader dissolve now to edit the shader graph just double click on the shader graph it will open up a window so this is the shader graph editor. So let's double click to maximize it. And by default, you should see the blackboard graph inspector and main preview. So I had disabled it. So that is why it was not there. Uh, this should be your default window. So this is the blackboard. This is the graph inspector. And this is your main preview. Now you will see two blocks here. One is the vertex block and the other one is the fragment block. Depending on the properties that are connected to the vertex and the fragment, the end result of the shader will be. Now to achieve the dissolve effect, we need the alpha and the alpha clip threshold. These are available inside the fragment block. So select the fragment block, right click, click on add block node and then select alpha. Similarly, add block node and alpha clip threshold. So as you can see both alpha and alpha clip threshold are grayed out that is because you need to enable it so in the graph inspector go to graph setting and find the parameter called alpha clipping and check it make it true so now you can see both alpha and alpha clip threshold are true now the way we are going to achieve the dissolve effect is we'll will give a texture with variable alpha value as the input to the alpha and will vary the alpha clip threshold to basically display the, the texture that is above the alpha value. So now the best way to achieve this is using simple noise. So there is a node inside shader graph which is called simple noise. So just right click on the workspace here, the empty space and click create node and search for simple noise. So we added a simple noise block here. If you want to reduce the size of the grains inside this, you can just reduce the value of X here. So let's set it to something like 45. And we'll take this output here and connect it to the alpha of our fragment. So you can see uh, the material is not fully rendered here. That is because the alpha clip threshold is set at 0.5. So if you vary alpha clip threshold from 0 to 1, you can see the main preview here and see how the UI. At 0, the complete material is rendered. And if we slowly increase towards 1, you can see that the material is dissolving. 
and at a particular point the material disappears we have actually achieved the dissolve effect just by adding the simple noise and varying the alpha clip threshold but we need to vary this alpha clip threshold from outside and not inside the shader graph editor so we'll add a property here that will be exposed outside in the inspector so that we can control the dissolve effect from the material itself so to do that uh, what we can do is just go to the blackboard and click on the plus sign and select float and we'll call this clipping value and then you can just drag this clipping value and place it here and connect it to the alpha clip threshold then select this clipping value and go to the node settings in graph inspector and under the mode settings select slider so this will give you a slider which will have a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 1 so now you can just save the asset now let's go back to the scene view and see what has happened go ahead and select the dissolve effect material so you can see under the surface inputs a clipping value parameters available and it has a slider which ranges from 0 to 1 so since we have already applied the material to the cube, if we change the slider, you can see that the cube is slowly disappearing. Now you can control this clipping value parameter from your script and basically change the value from 0 to 1 and have a dissolve effect here. So having a dissolve effect is that easy using a shader graph. This effect does look like a dissolve effect, but we can make it better. In most of the cases, we have some kind of a texture for our game object. So it's better to have a texture input for our shader. So let's go ahead and add a texture. So let's click create node and search for texture. So most of the time it's a 2D texture, so it's texture 2D asset. We want this texture 2D to be exposed on, in our material. So for that we have to convert it into a property. To convert this node into a property, you can just right click here and go to convert to and select property. So now we can see a texture 2D property is available here. You cannot directly connect this texture 2D property to the base color because this is a texture 2D and this is a color input. So there is a type mismatch. So there is one more node which is called sample texture 2D which takes in a texture and extracts the color information from the texture. So let's go ahead and click on create node and search for sample texture 2D. And then connect our texture as the input to that and let's take the output rgb and connect it to our base color so now if you save your asset and go back so there's a texture 2d asset which takes in a texture here so now if let's go ahead and i have a zombie texture here so let me assign the zombie texture to the cube so you can see that the texture is now applied and if i dissolve now so this looks much better than dissolving a plain cube, right? So now we can assign whatever texture we want to the game object and we can dissolve it. Now let's go ahead and add a glow effect to it. So to add a glow effect, you can go back to the dissolve shader. Let's maximize it. We'll be using the emission parameter of the fragment block. So we'll be using a step node that does the same thing as alpha clip threshold. So let's go ahead and create a node that is called step. And the step has two input. One is edge, the other one is the input. And the edge will take in the noise. And once you vary the input value, you can see that from zero to one, It's going from zero visibility to maximum visibility. So we'll use the same clipping value here and connect it to the step node. But if we connect the clipping value directly to the step node, then there will be no effect visible because we'll be clipping off the value using alpha clip threshold. So the output of the step node will not be visible. So what we can do is we can offset the clipping value by a small value. To offset the value, just use an add node. So let's create an add node. And we can move it a little here. 
So the first input is the clipping value, and here we can say 0 0.01. Okay, and this output will go as the input of the step node. And the output of the step node will basically go to the emission of fragment. So now let's save the asset and let's go to Unity and see how it looks. So this is our scene. Now if we slowly increase the clipping value. So you can see there's a you can see there's a slight outline here, which is happening because of the emission property. So this looks much cooler than before. Now to make it even more better, let's go ahead and add a color to the emission. So let's move it a little more back. Okay, and the noise will go here. Okay. Now let's add a color note. Okay. And then let's set the property of the color node to HDR. Okay, and let's set the color to blue. Okay, a little bit dark, lighter maybe. Okay. So now we'll multiply this color with the output of the step node. So let's create a multiply block. And then connect this here and connect the step node here, move the multiply block here, and connect the output to emission. Now the multiply blocks output is connected to emission, and the step output and the color is basically multiplied. If you want, you can set this as a property, so you can just go and say convert to property. So that way the, you can control the color from outside. So let's save the asset. And now you can see that the material has a color property here. It has a clipping value here and a texture 2D property. And since the outline was really small, let's increase the offset by 0 0.01 and make it 0 0.02. So now let's save the asset, go back to the scene. And now let's see what happens. Okay. So now you can see that the edge is light blue in color. So we can just change the color to whatever we want. So green, yellow. I think yellow looks much better. Yeah. So now we have a cool effect, but the only problem here is the inside of the cube is not visible. So it's not having the desired effect that we want because when it is decaying, the inside of the cube also should be visible. Now to fix that issue, just go back to your shader and go to graph setting. And in the render phase, select both. Now let's save the asset and go back to the scene. So now you can see that inside of the cube is also visible. So that way it is looking much better now. Now you can play around with these settings and make it even better. Uh, what else you can do is you can change the type of noise here. There are three types of noise, gradient noise, simple noise. And I forgot the name of the other one. Let's just type noise. Yeah, it's called Veronoi. Yeah, so there are three types of noise. So you can basically add them. And you can also control the properties of the noise to basically change how it looks in the output. So now it's your turn. Just go ahead and play around. If you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comment box below. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.